<laughs> Hello, my name is Victoria, and I I want to talk to you today about the realities of hell. A lot of people don't want to talk about it, and you don't you don't hear a lot of pastors or preaching about it. And I know that um you know I know that God is a God of grace. I know that He's a God of mercy. And I know, and I know that God loves us. And people, people ask the question, why would a loving God send someone to hell? But we're going to find out in a few minutes, you know, about hell because, you know, even though God is a loving God, he is a just God and he is a righteous judge. Um, hell is real. And, um, we, we need to, we need to, we need to wake up, you know, and be aware of it. And if you read your Bible, you know it's real. Even though if you don't hear anybody talking about it, read your Bible and then you will know. You will know. So let's get started. It's seven facts about hell according to the Bible. Um, again, my name is Victoria Howard. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, share. Okay. Number one, the first fact is that we're not living in hell on earth as some people say. Some people say, oh, we're already in hell. But, you know, only people that have left their body that are dead um, can can be in hell. So if you're still walking on this earth, you are not in hell. It may seem really bad at the time and things may really seem to be like going crazy. And it may seem like a hell on earth. but the the uh, fact is, hell is way worse than, than what you assume or think. So if you, like I said, if you're alive on this planet, you are not in hell, no matter how bad the situation may seem. And according to Proverbs, it says the way of life is above to the wise, that he may depart from hell beneath. So if if you are alive and living, then you are not in hell at this point. And number the, the second reason, the second thing is hell is real. There's so many scriptures in the Bible that refer to hell, and Jesus talked about hell a lot. And so you whether you trying to vacillate and oscillate and trying to figure out whether hell is real, um, I, I wouldn't take that chance in uh waiting until I die to find out. Um the scripture in Matthew chapter 10, verse 28 says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both body and soul, both soul and body in hell. And so that, that, that lets you know that, you know, hell is real. And that's just one scripture, but we, there are so many scriptures about hell. Um, and number three is that hell is hot. <laughs> Some people say, oh, that's just a, um, a, um, a shadow and a symbol. Or it's, it's something else. It's not really real. It's make believe. It's made up. Um, hell is also referred to as a bottomless pit and it is hot. It's hot. There'll be fire and brimstone. Um, in Revelation 9, chapter 2, it says, and he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke you know it's not only why are you going to have smoke if, if there's no fire that's my that's my that's my my question okay hell is a dark place there's no light at all the the only light the true light is Jesus Christ, and he is not there in hell. He's definitely not, not there. Um, number five is hell was not created for humans. And here, here's the answer to that question. A lot of people say, why would God, a loving God, send somebody to hell? If God is love, which he is, why would he send somebody to hell? And, and here's my, 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 my answer to that. Hell was not created for humans at all. 
<laughs> it was not. But unfortunately, since God doesn't um, force anyone to do evil or force anyone to do good, then if you if you go to hell, it's your choice. Um, it says in um, Matthew twenty five forty one, then shall they say unto, then shall he say unto them on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So who is hell prepared for? It's prepared for Satan or the devil, Lucifer and his angels or demons, those that follow him. They got kicked out of heaven. We'll talk about that some other time. And number six, like I said, if you go to hell, it's because you chose to go to hell, not because God sent you. Yeah, God God is, is love. And why would a loving God send anyone to hell? He doesn't. You choose to go. He gives you a choice. He doesn't make you do anything. It's your choice. So if you choose to go to hell, then it's on you. Um, um, in Deuteronomy 30, chapter 19, it says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. So, you know, God was giving us a choice. He said, hey, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. You're going to either choose life or you're going to choose death. And so it's your choice. So God doesn't send anybody to hell. If you go to hell, it's, it's because you decided to. You made a choice. Uh, number seven. And this is last. I, this is, I told you this is going to be really short. Um, Jesus paid the price for our sins on the cross. He prayed, he went to hell for us so we didn't have to go. And so all we have to do is receive the gift that he, um, he provided for us. He took on sickness so that we could be healed. Um, he went to hell so that we didn't have to because he took on all our sins. And he also became poor that we might be rich. And we'll talk about that another time. So we have to look, look unto Jesus because he's the author and finisher of our faith. If you, if you, um, want to miss hell then you have to receive the gift that um jesus provided he went to hell for us and because he he wasn't qualified to be there because he had no sin the only sin that he had on him was he took on ours on the cross and that's the reason he died but when he went to hell he hadn't committed any sin so he didn't have he 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 wasn't supposed to be there that's why he was able to take the keys of hell and death and bring them back so we 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 have a opportunity to miss hell we don't have to go to hell if we decide to go to hell it's because we want to it's because we want to jesus said i am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me so if you're trying to get to heaven or miss hell in any other way form or fashion other than through Jesus, the Son of God, then you you are you are deceived. You're deceived and you're going the wrong way. Turn to Jesus. And he, he already paid the price for you not to have to go to hell. Um and if you're you're doing anything other than receiving Jesus uh to go to heaven then you're you're in the wrong. And I, I see where um we have people that are um killing themselves and saying that god told them to do it <laughs> um and they're killing other people and and that's not that's not the way to heaven they're in for a rude awakening they're in for a rude awakening jesus is the way the truth and the life and no man cometh to the father but by him so you know, if you want to, re if you want to go to heaven, you want to miss hell, then you need to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And here's a prayer you can pray to receive Jesus. 
And if you're ready to do that, you should you go ahead and do it. I mean, some people make it so hard, and it's not hard. You just need to be sincere. You need to be sincere. And this is this the prayer on the screen. It says, Father, I know that I've broken your laws, and my sins have separated me from you. I am truly sorry. And now I want to turn away from my past sinful life toward you. Please forgive me. Help me to avoid sinning again. I believe that your son, Jesus Christ, died for my sins, was resurrected from the dead, is alive today. And here's my prayer. I invite Jesus to come into my heart or to become Lord of my life, to rule and reign in my heart from this day forth. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So if you prayed that prayer and you asked Jesus to come into your heart, then guess where Jesus is? He is in your heart. So, and you also need to get baptized. Uh, tell someone else that you made a decision to uh, follow Christ and that you become a Christian. Spend time with God every day so that you can grow. And, um, you know, it don't have to be a long, like I said, it doesn't have to be a long uh, time spending with him. At least 15, you can start with 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Just develop a daily habit, you know, of a time of reading the word and praying and stuff. Um, fellowship with other believers. Uh, get planted in a church, a local church. And just have that hunger and thirst to grow so that you can become a mature Christian. And that's it about, you know, that's it for me, me today. If you accepted Jesus Christ, congratulations. And um, you can send me an email. And my email should be listed under the um, show. Click more. Show more. <laughs> you can contact me and say, hey, Victoria, I, re I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And so I'll be glad to hear from you. God bless.